In today's episode, we're going to talk about the switch statement in GameMaker Studio 2. This also applies to previous versions, so you can follow along if you're in an older version. The statement is exactly the same. So real quick, let's talk about the setup I have here, and then we're going to jump right into the code. I have an object called object switch that I've just created a create statement. And in the create statement, I've, I've written some code. In our room test, I've dropped the, the object in here just so when we fire up the game, it immediately starts running this code. Um, and it's going to output in our output window as an example. Um, so uh, these little statements show debug are just for markers so we see the output easier. Uh, they are not a part of the switch statement, so you don't need them, so don't worry about that. A switch statement is the ability to um, take in an expression or a number or a variable, check it, and then look at a number of paths, in this case, cases, to see if they match. And if they match, run the code associated with those cases. So let's walk through an example because I think it's easier to kind of talk about it as we go. So the syntax is switch and then parentheses something in here, and this could be a variable, a number, or an expression. We could call a function that would return something that we could evaluate. And then once it's evaluated this, we have brackets here, um, and it starts going through each of these cases or paths within the code to see which one matches. These cases right here, I have numbers right now, but these could also be variables, or they could be expressions as well. So it would try to match up what's in here with what's in here. And as soon as it matches, it's gonna run the code associated with it. So let's talk about that. Let's give this example. We're gonna evaluate switch five. It's gonna say five, this is five. Let's go look at the first case. Case zero doesn't match with five, so it's gonna skip this code within this bracket. These brackets are optional, by the way. I like it because it's easier for me to read the code between them and know when it finishes. It's gonna to go to the next case, case five, colon. Okay, that's a match. So it's gonna start running this code. It's gonna write five to the debug screen. And then this is key, break. When it sees the break statement, it says stop and don't evaluate anything else or try to run anything else after this. And it just finishes the whole switch statement. So if I were to run this right now, you would actually see that because I have five and five matches. So I should see that pretty clearly in the output here. So if I go down here, you can see start, five, and then end. So that matched exactly. So if we had, I were to put six, it would match this one. Uh, now let's talk about the default statement and then I'm gonna talk about the break statement again. So the default statement is another optional thing. So let's say you wanted to have the switch statement, but if nothing ever matched, you wanted to at least set a variable or a tile or something to the default. And that's what this is for. So you can optionally put this in. You don't have to put any number in here. You just say default colon, and then whatever code you want in here, and then you're done. So if none of them match, it'll hit the default. Now I wanna go over the, the break statement. So what happens here is if, as it's evaluating, if it doesn't match the case, it skips it. If it but once it matches the case, if you don't have a break statement, it will actually run the code any code after it until it runs into a break statement. So I took out the break statement here. So now it's gonna run five and six, which is interesting. Um, yes, we're gonna stop the current project and run this new one. Because your first thing is you're thinking, it doesn't have six as a, con as a condition, it didn't match it, but that, that doesn't matter. Once you match one case, it just starts plowing through all the code until it hits a break statement. So if you had a bunch of cases and you stack them up next to each other, you said, hey, if I hit five or six or seven and you want to run e any of that code, you could actually just take this out. So we could say something like this. Case six, let's make this seven now. And I'm gonna write another case called six. So we're gonna say, this is five, six, and seven. So if I put leave this as five, it's gonna run through all these, it's just gonna keep blowing through all this code and it's gonna still match this at the end. Okay, so see there, it says start and then five, six, seven. 
So this could be very interesting if you have code that you're saying, hey, I have multiple cases that I want to fall into this. If, you're, if your switch statement was checking for a key press, a series of key presses, and you said, hey, if the person pressed, you, you check the key here, and then your case was key up or key A, or something like that, it would evaluate those and it would say those are true, so run this code for moving the player up. And so that creates some more power that you have. But that's only as long as one of these matches. So if I put in here eight and none of these match, this is where we start to get the default statement. So let's run that. Okay, so here you see it says start, default, and end. So when nothing matches, that it doesn't have that case where it's just because there's no break statement, it still didn't match anything in here. In fact, it didn't match any of the cases, so we go to the default statement. And that's it, that's the, basically the setup for a switch statement. It's pretty simple but powerful. I've used it quite a bit for state machines and other ways of breaking down logic. I've had it for, uh, I would pass in a tile ID here and then all my cases would say, hey, this tile is equal to this actual tile set over here. Um, there's a lot of cool things that you could do with switch statements. So uh, check them out, check it out on the manual and um, practice with making switch statements. So that's it for today. I'll see you guys in the next video.